Hello and welcome to the Homeschool Conversations Africa podcast. Here we discuss homeschooling from the African perspective and the unique challenges that come with it. If you're considering homeschooling, we hope to inspire you as you take this bold step. If you're already a homeschooler, we are here to share encouragement for this wonderful journey we are on to educate our children in the best way we can. We are your host, Jifa Andam and Harissa Nete Marvel. Let's dive right into today's conversation. Hello again, dear friends, and welcome to another episode of Homeschool Conversations Africa. We're glad to have you with us today. And we're especially excited about today's episode because we get to do something a little different. Um, Since we began, we've mostly um, interviewed or spoken with homeschool parents. But today we have a very special guest, um, a homeschool graduate with us, who's going to tell us about his experience. I know um, for me, I certainly wanted to know about about um, young people who've been homeschooled part or all of their lives when I began with with my children, it kind of gives you some reassurance that, you know, there is hope <laughs> for the future and you're not going to mess up your kids um, by doing this. So we're excited to have with us today, Freddie Kearney. Freddie is a 25 year old creative and I'm gonna have to ask Freddie what creative means, based in Waco, Texas. Um, He's currently on staff at a local church as a worship resident, and he also works as a coffee shop barista on the side. Freddie loves to lead worship. I know this. He has um, some awesome music videos, um, some that he did with uh, West Coast Baptist College. Um, And recently, I think a couple that he and some other guys put together and I've been singing some of those songs. So he he leads worship. Um, he loves to spend time with friends and family, watch movies, have have deep conversations around the questions about life and faith. And he loves to explore the world around him. He also enjoys a good meal, my kind of guy, <laughs> and is always searching for the best spots to eat within a hundred mile radius. We're excited to have um, Freddie here with us and we can't wait to hear all that he has to share with us today. Freddie loves um, values, authenticity, discipline, and excellence, and is always striving to live out those values on a daily basis. And um, I know that he could not have, have achieved all that he has if he didn't have that discipline and excellence that he speaks of. So we are glad to have you with us today. Freddie. Thank you so much. It's it's a pleasure to be with you guys. Thank you guys. So um, for those of you who have been following us um, along, Frederick is Pastor and Mrs. Kenny's son. We interviewed them in episode five and six, and it was just um, a wonderful time where we learned about their their homeschool journey. And so it's, I think it's really come full circle now that we get to interview Freddie as well. That we get to find out, you know, from the horse's own mouth. Thank you for having me. I'm super pumped to be here on the podcast and to share with you guys. Yeah. So let's just jump in and can you tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your family background, where you're from? Okay, we've mentioned a little bit about what you're doing now, but maybe you could uh, tell us more about it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Would love to, absolutely. Um, So my family background, uh, my parents are church planning missionaries in Ghana, West Africa. And so that uh, was a huge part of my life. Uh, I lived there with them for eight years. And uh, that was that was an amazing part of my life, getting to be there on the mission field uh, in a foreign country, uh, serving in ministry with my parents. That was really awesome. Mm-hmm. My country of origin, I was born in the United States. Um, 1996, I was born in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. And I lived there with my family for about eight and a half, nine years. And then okay. in like my 10th, when I was 10 years old, 11, we moved to North Carolina, mm. lived there for just a few months uh, before we moved to Ghana. So country of origin is, is United States, short answer to the question. Okay. And then um, what am I doing now? So 
Um, as the introduction said, as you so beautifully said in the introduction, I am living in Waco, Texas, and I am a worship resident uh, at a here. And I also work at a local coffee shop mm -hmm. as a barista. And the worship residency, for those of you who might be wondering, uh, I think the best way to classify it would be as a intensive internship mm. where I'm taking a lot of time to learn the craft and the art of worship leading, being a worship pastor, um, studying underneath the worship pastor that is there right now, getting the opportunity to lead on uh, different areas in different capacities across the ministry. Also being part of planning meetings for Sunday services in the areas of worship, uh, teaching, just a lot, a lot of, uh, it's a very all-inclusive program mm. where you're just really running alongside and doing life with um, leadership and learning from watching and just experiencing over and over again. Um, and then working at the coffee shop, it's a, it's a part-time job. And so mm. I actually do not drink coffee. I'm not a <laughs> coffee guy. Um, I, I do appreciate the art of coffee and making coffee and it's, it's beautiful. Um, but that is like a part-time job for me while mm. I'm doing the residency just to, uh, for income right there. So, and I, I needed something that was a little bit more flexible that will allow me to uh, devote a lot of my time to the church. Cause that's, you know, my focus mm. for being here. So that's yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. So you moved purposely to do the worship residency. Yes, that was, that was the whole purpose of me moving to Texas was to come out here and to devote some time into what I believe the Lord has gifted me with mm -hmm. and what I want to take and do with um, my life. Mm -hmm. So Freddie, yes, is, it, is it safe to say you're following in your father's footsteps? Is this it or it's a bit yeah, different? You know, yeah, um, that is a good question. And I'm actually gonna, you said I need to define creative for some of us and I let me do that real quick. Um, creative basically is a, it's a short way of saying that I, I'm involved in the creative arts, uh, whether that be for me personally, it's music. Um, it's also manifested itself in uh, video and photography. Um, so that's, that's what I mean by creative. Mm. It's because uh, some people could say like, you know, I'm a singer or some people are like, you know, I'm a videographer or I'm a mm. graphic designer. Whereas I've done all of those and I can, I can do all of those. So I, it's, it's easier to just say, you know, I, I work in this this kind of space, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. But um, speaking to do you follow what you just said um, about me following my father's footsteps, I actually called my dad about two years ago. It's crazy how time flies. And uh, I was 23 at the time. And I called him and I was like, Dad, you know, what were you doing with your life when you were my age? And as he described some of the things that he was doing and like how his life looked at that time, I was just like, wow, like my life is like almost the same <laughs> um, because um, he told me, I, well, actually in one of our phone conversations that I had with him, I shared with him that me and a friend had decided to jump into our vehicle and drive to Las Vegas because we wanted to see a movie. And this was around the time where during COVID, all the movie theaters had been shut down and especially in Southern California, because that's where I was living at the time. And theaters had started to open up in different states, but not all the theaters were showing the same movies because some of the movies they didn't want to release them because they knew they weren't going to make as much money mm -hmm. but there was one theater in vegas um that was showing a movie that both me and my friend really wanted to watch and so like like two days before the movie came out we were like bro let's buy tickets mm -hmm. let's drive it's only three hours so we jumped in our car and we drove like super <laughs> spontaneous to go to vegas and we made a whole trip out of it. It was fantastic um, just to watch a movie. And my dad, um, when I told him that story, you know, he 
called, when he called me back a couple days later, he was like, yeah, son, when you told me that story, it made me think about when I was young and 23 and uh, I was living with my friends in, I think it was Oklahoma. And one day they were like, let's drive to California. And they just drove to California one night, you know, just that, that random spontaneity. Um, and also, you know, when he was younger, he lived like in a house with a bunch of other guys, young guys. That's my situation. That was my situation in California. That's my situation here, mm-hmm. you know, and just kind of really experiencing life in a very active way. You know, um, I, I'm not, I don't know to what extent my life will marry my dad's. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what God does. Um, God's called into the mission field and uh, overseas. I haven't really felt that calling on my life. Um, so that might be, you know, where it differs. But I think in a lot of ways, me and my dad's life could, you know, look, look similar. So, yeah. That's interesting. I bet it warms his heart. Yeah. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Okay, Freddie. So let's move on to um, um, the homeschool part, which I'm sure many people want to hear about. So can you give us your, shall I call it, homeschool history? Yeah. Um, Were you always homeschooled? What was that experience like for you overall? And then we can get into some details um, later on. Absolutely. Um, so I was all, I was not always homeschooled. My homeschool career <laughs> started um, when I was born, basically, when I, when I came out. Um, they were like, all right, homeschooling it is. I think for a little time, like I think while my mom was working early on, I went to like a daycare preschool type thing. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what it was. My parents would wouldn't know for exactly what that was but I do remember like being in a group like in a like with with students in a room like at a very very young age um but basically you know first grade all the way up until um 10th grade ninth grade I was homeschooled and then um the last few years of my high school career I was at a uh, boarding school there in Ghana uh where I basically that's where my high school career came to a close right there so for the majority of my life, uh, I'd say 80% of my school history is homeschool. So, yeah. And what, what would you say that was mm-hmm. like for you? I mean, can you tell us a bit about it? What was your experience like as a homeschool kid? Yeah, so it was, it was very unique. It, it, it changed forms, I would say, when we moved from the United States to Ghana. Um, but I think one thing that stayed consistent is how much work my mom, my mom put into teaching us, um, buying, buying the materials, creating lesson plans, um, having us be part of co-ops, um, co-ops, you know, groups that put you in with other homeschoolers. And so in that way it kind of simulates like a school setting where you're able to participate in group activities Mm -hmm. things like science fairs and and stuff like that um it was a lot i would say like a lot when i was very very younger um like homeschooling was super super fun very interesting it was very non-linear and it always felt alive Mm. and it, like happening it was really cool um being a part of it you know like i would say like first to sixth grade um and then um i would say around from eighth grade to about ninth grade was where there was a little bit of shift for me um which resulted in me ended up ending up going to boarding school but that was where kind of like it was a little bit hard for me to engage um and I think there were there's there's a couple factors to that. Um, being overseas um, was a contributor, and so like there there were there's a couple factors underneath that. And I would say, personally, for me as a 13 year old living in Ghana, 
I knew that I would probably not be staying in Ghana for college. I knew that, you know, I had an easy ticket to the U.S. whether I want, like, whether I wanted to go to college or not, like, I would just go back to the United States, you know, whereas I was surrounded by a lot of young people who were like, you know, let me take this exam, let me take this exam so I can get a good grade and so I can get out of Ghana and go to, go to you know, a foreign country and study there. For me, it's just like, yeah, well, I know that's going to be a part of my life. Um, so um, there was like this, this, that kind of, um, I guess I was, a, I was uh, painfully over aware of the blessings that I had, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and so as a result, um, I was not very motivated to devote myself to studies. Mm. Um, and then another thing that um, compounded upon that was, um, I would say like the kids that I was surrounded with um, and like the, the school calendar, for me, it was like, I didn't always, like I was alone in a field where everyone was like, you know, on like the government school calendar and taking these different tests. And I was the only one, you know, did I really have a summer? Did I really have a fall break? Um, those things were like, I guess, big blocks to me that really didn't exist. Like no one else had those. And I was the only one who was like functioning with some of those things. Um, um, so my homeschool history towards my high school was a, was was a little, less fantastic than when I was younger. Mm. Um, but my parents saw that and to their credit, they saw that and were like, Hey, like we want you to, you know, finish school, be on time. And so that's what ended up, uh, that's what resulted in me going to the boarding school, mm. um, later down the road. But I would say like the experience, everything that was there for me was great. My parents mm -hmm. did a great job. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to say like they, they, they like dropped the ball in some area because they did it, mm -hmm. you know, because even when they realized what they were doing wasn't working, they switched it up so that I could achieve. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that's to their credit right there. Um, but I definitely, <laughs> it's not like, <laughs> the system did not fail me. I failed the system mm -hmm. <laughs> when it I came to that, high school. That is quite um a broad experience, I think, for most teenagers, they get to that point where it's it's difficult to sort of find the motivation and apply themselves to their studies and all of that. But I like what you said about your parents switching it up when they realized that it wasn't working. I think that's one of the key advantages to homeschooling is that you can try something different if what you're doing is not working. There's no need to yeah. stick to a, a particular system if you feel like it's um, it's not working. I think maybe people think that they have to homeschool for the rest of their child's life, but I, you're a good example that you can, you can change things up. You can switch it up if it's not working. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I would agree. Like, I don't have kids yet. Mm. One day I will. Uh, and I'm excited for that uh, possibility, mm. but always I think analyzing the intentions of why you know you're doing homeschooling mm -hmm. and recognizing that like the why is so important mm -hmm. um because like maybe if you're wanting to you know give your kids a good foundation then you know give like go in hard you know like mm -hmm. first through third grade or first through sixth grade and then once they're good to go in that area then ship them off to high school mm -hmm. you know um and so many there are so many variety of reasons for homeschooling and I think with the way um especially at least western society is going um there are more and more families wanting to homeschool right now um but yeah that's uh just uh did you ever feel like you were missing out at a certain point because you weren't going to uh, traditional school oh for sure absolutely mm -hmm. Um, I, especially when I was younger, I wanted to like be part of like, and once again, my parents, they, 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 they did a lot of things mm -hmm. to help, to help, um, supplement for some of these things. And I don't even know if I expressed this to them and if they like knew that I needed it, 
Mm. Um, but I definitely always like felt the longing of like wanting to like be part of like sports teams, athletics, you know? Mm. Um, and I, I'm not even an athlete. Like, I don't feel like I'm a natural athlete at all. My brothers, I feel like are way more naturally athletically gifted. Mm. Um, but like things like things like athletics, I would always like see kids part of teams. I was like, Oh man, I wish I could be a part of a team or something like that. Mm. Um, I think that, that was like a big thing. And then like, but like still like saying that, like I know my parents involved me in soccer when I was little, even like when we moved to Ghana uh, early on, like we formed a community soccer team. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like, there was like, oh yeah, like I'm fine. Like I don't need like a, a soccer team, like for through a school or whatever. Like I have that by myself, like through my community. Um, I think other than like community activities, like on a, like on a regular basis and stuff like that, I didn't really feel like I was missing too much. Um, I didn't really feel like I was missing too much. It was nice to like not have to wear a uniform all the time. <laughs> Although my mom, there there was a season of time where she had us dress up a certain way for for school, and that was that was really interesting. Yeah, that was very interesting. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I felt like I was missing out on. Yeah, I would say at the time, the only thing that I missed out on was like organized athletics. I feel like that was like one thing that I wish I could have been a part of. Yeah, because like I always, uh, yeah, that's what, yeah, definitely. Because anytime that any game was played, like, you know, like we would go to church or something or like I'd be at a camp and kids would be like, let's play football or let's play basketball or let's play, you know, um, let's play baseball. Like because of homeschooling, I knew how to throw a free shot, you know, but I didn't understand the rules of basketball. Um, because of homeschooling, um, I knew how to swing a golf club, you know. Um, but it's not like I went out playing with the boys every week. Mm-hmm. That was with my parents. And that was that was awesome. That was cool. Um, but like I learned how to do a lot of things like on their own, but like I never like like I always, as a kid, I was like, oh man, I don't know how this football game works. I'm just watching these kids throw around and chase this crazy ball, like whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know? <laughs> um, so I think, I think that honestly, like that's the biggest thing I felt like I was missing out on, to be honest. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I guess what I'm hearing you say, it's, it's very important to make sure that your children find community around homeschooling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's, that's that's a good point. Um, but how how was the dynamic between yourself and your siblings, though? Oh my goodness! Um, I I've I I I wrote down the other day that if there were things that I could thank my parents for, it would be um, the emphasis they put on developing a relationship with each other as siblings, mm. um, because. One of the things my dad said, probably on a weekly basis, is like, because we would we would gather for family devotions every morning. That's one of our like, that's one of the unique things about my family. Um, not just the fact that we'd gather for family devotions, but also how long some of those family devotions could be. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but one, of, he would say almost on a weekly basis, you know, these are your built-in best friends, mm-hmm. you know, and there were times you know, when we were younger, when we didn't all see eye to eye on things, obviously. And even now we're not a monolith, we're still individual people. But over the past two years, getting to spend time with my brothers as adults, all three of us has just been so amazing. And like having my parents, you know, emphasize the importance of family and the gift of family has really I've been able to cherish that even more now. Um, and I like the relationship with siblings growing up was fantastic. And now it's 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 even greater. So so Freddie, would would you say I know I know you spoke of your um wild times in high school? <laughs> Just kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but would you would you say that um you were academically prepared for college? Yes, yes, yes. I would say that I was academically prepared for college. Um, my parents taught me um, the value of research, um, the importance of good grammar and writing, um, 
And I will say, I, I think I was as academically prepared for college uh, as best as most high schoolers could be. Um, I think from what I've seen, from what I've observed, I don't, it doesn't feel like most high school, like most graduates period, like from whatever are completely ready for college. Mm. Um, because college just throws so much in, 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 in a kid's lap that it's just like, what in the world do I do? Because mm -hmm. now, um, I guess, depending on what household you grew up in, like if you grew up in a more stricter household, which I would imagine like most homeschooled kids are coming from a little bit of a stricter household, um, society, like um, social life is now yours. Like you don't have to ask mom and dad, hey, can I do this, can I do that? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you know, there's like this, um, maybe if you say yes to too many things, you're like this overwhelming and then you're like, okay, well, I have academics and social life, like what do I do? Mm -hmm. You know, but academically speaking, yeah, I think I was prepared for college. Like my mom taught me how to take good notes. Um, I learned that from no one else, but my mom, she taught me how to take great notes, how to listen for notes. And like, that was, that was a gift. Um, taught me how to, how to, how to write papers and how to form thoughts on paper in a clear and concise way. Um, which I think are like probably two of the biggest things you need for college. Like you need to learn how to, you need to know how to research, you need to know how to write, and um, you, need, you need to know how to take notes. I think if you know those things academically, you'll be fine. Mm. Um, so yeah, I definitely think I was academically prepared for a college setting. Thanks. Um, that's that's a good thing to point out for parents who are listening. So let's teach our kids to write well, mm -hmm. to be able to do research. And what was the third one? Take take good notes. Uh, take, I take, take, take take good notes. notes. Yep. Yeah. Take good notes. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks. I'm loving this. I'm 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 taking notes, <laughs> <laughs> trying to see. Okay, what am I doing? What could I change? I love this. I love this conversation because it's it's very candid. And that's exactly what we want so that um, parents who are not sure know what it is that they are getting into and can learn from these conversations about um, what to do to make sure that their kids um, get the best out of, out of the situation or arrangement, I should say. Yeah. So um, did you have other homeschoolers in your college? I'm kind of curious. Um, and how did you think? Oh, yes, ma'am, I did. Um, yeah, the, there was, there, there's a, so I knew a lot of homeschoolers in my college. And there were some who did really well. Um, and there were some who struggled. And from what I saw, it had to do a lot with their personal giftings and their personal like they leaned towards uh, because a lot of these kids that i'm thinking of like very hard workers um very gifted at like s certain things like whether that be interpersonal relations or perhaps something in the creative arts um really really gifted there um, but some of them, others were gifted in academics, like mind-blowingly well, to the point where college was too easy for them. Um, so there's there's definitely um, a wide range. Mm. Not all not all students are created equal. Not all students, not all people are gifted equally. Mm. Um, and some some people do well in an academic setting, other people struggle yeah. through an academic setting and still do well. Other people struggle in an academic setting and they struggle and struggle as hard as they can and they're still unable to do it. That's right. Um, I, I think a good point that Fred makes here is he spoke about personal giftings, right? Yeah. And so that's what we have to try to do as parents. I mean, no matter which track we are taking, traditional school, homeschool, mix, mixture, whatever it is, that we have to be acutely aware of our children's abilities um, because we're all different. 
yeah. and try to cater to that as much as we can so that mm-hmm. they can be successful in whichever and you know what whatever they endeavor to do mm-hmm. um yeah so that's it uh, that's but I, i'm wondering Fred, excellent advice yeah um so the other homeschool kids that you met would you say that they were weird or they lacked social skills or i think that's what people worry about uh, when it comes to homeschooling that their children will be weird that's great fred doesn't look like he lacks any social skills <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wrap up here but we will continue this conversation in our next episode so do join us then thank you for listening to the homeschool conversations africa podcast